Episode 5, The Wheel of Time. All right, all right. It was a good one. It was a good one. I mean, come on now. What do you expect? After last week's episode, they're not going to hit us with another war. Um, That wasn't even a war, man. <laughs> I can't wait to see what a war looks like in this show. But they're not going to hit us with another battle. It was still a good episode. Uh, It picks up right after all the deaths from last episode and they're burying the dead <sighs> Stefan man he looks like he's in pain he's in pain I mean when they say you can feel an Aes Sedai's pain they mean it hey, he's in this dude is in pain man you can see it on his face he looks half dead man he looks half dead Ugh, I feel bad for him but yeah they, they bury them with just sheets it looks like i don't know they cut to the beginning the the intro before you see anything else so i don't know if they actually throw dirt on them or if they just leave them in the fields with the sheet on if that's just how they bury their dead um which was interesting but yeah man that's that's a, a great way to pick up the episode i wanted to see i wanted to see tom and the fade still fighting but they didn't take my advice Come on now. You got to take my advice. Just with that one, you should have took my advice. That would have been amazing. Just they're tired. They're breathing hard. And you actually hear, you actually hear the fade talk. It's like, man, I didn't know you were this. I didn't know you was this bad, man. You, you're pretty bad, Tom. <laughs> that would have been nice. But anyway, let me continue on this episode. Logan looks half dead too, man. How long is Logan going to last? I like Logan, man. But in the cage, he just looks like he's dead. And it goes back to what uh, we hear about Owen's story. After they took his power, that was it. He didn't want to live anymore. That's how Logan looks right now. Like, he's just looking for a way to end his, end his life. And it sucks, because I like Logan. I hope, we, I hope he's still in the show. I like him. We cut to Matt and Rand walking with a bunch of people. I don't know where I don't know they're not the tinkers they're just a bunch of random people going back to the town and Matt looks really messed up like this curse that the blade is giving him is really doing a number on him he just looks withered and he, he looks ready to die too so I don't know what's going on with the blade I know it's a cursing Matt of course but is there a way that if he just throws away the blade, if he gets rid of it, will it help? Right now, he's confused. Rain is confused, especially after they heard what Tom said about Owen. They think he has the one power. He, they think Matt has the one power. And that's what is on their mind right now. He doesn't think the blade is what's doing this. It seems like they're just... One power, one power, one power, and not the blade itself. So I don't know. And another thing, Matt thinks that he kills the family. He thinks that he's the one responsible for the deaths of the family, for the death of the family. But wasn't you, Matt? He didn't kill him. I mean, it's pretty much confirmed, but not really, that the Fade killed him. But he thinks that he was the one. And Rand is trying to convince him that, hey, it wasn't you. It was the Fade. You wouldn't do that to that little girl. You wouldn't do that to the family. So he's trying to convince him it wasn't your fault. You didn't do this. And Matt just keeps thinking, man, what did I do? What did I do to that family? Why did we even go there in the first place? It's my fault. I killed them. And we don't know, really. Well, we kind of do know really but matt is still in the dark he still thinks that he did it so the Aes Sedai and naive get to the white tower and here's something that is interesting they have to keep her safe moraine puts her in this room says hey this is the safest place in the city you want to stay here because if you leave i can't protect you so I don't know if all the Aes Sedai are nervous 
because word spreads fast, according to Moraine. And once they hear about her powers, they're either going to be nervous or they're going to try to turn her into a novice to start to become an Aes Sedai. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with her. She just still seems like she's distant. She doesn't want anything to do with the Aes Sedai, which I can respect, even though they just had a battle together. She's still not sure about the Aes Sedai, and she wants to stay as far away from them as possible. But she stays in this room because Moraine says, hey, they will recruit you as soon as you leave. So this is the best place for you. You need to stay here. OK, if you want to if you want protection, this is where you need to stay. So, of course, she doesn't listen. I already knew that was going to happen. So we cut to Perrin and Egwene and they're still, you know, having a jolly time, you know, just dancing and, and walking with the tinkers and having a jolly time. No worries in the world. But then they see. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I like this dude. I like this dude, the questioner, the child Valda. Valda, child Valda, that's what he calls himself. I like him, man. This dude seems like a beast. I like him. So he, he know, he's talking to the, the main tinker. He sees Egwene and Perrin, and he's like, okay, this can't be just a coincidence. Nah. Go grab those, go grab those two right there. Cause the light, the light tells him. This can't be a coincidence. There has to be a reason why I run into you two times in the past month without a reason. So they form a chain. They're like, all right, you know what? Let's form a chain. And you know what <laughs> Child Devalda does? <laughs> he slaps her. Oh man. I, I didn't I didn't wasn't expecting that. But he slapped the heck out of her, man. He just Whew, she started bleeding. I didn't think he was going to do that, but he did. He's just, the sound effect was epic too. And they don't fight back. So they just get back into the, to get back into the chain. And then he's just looking around and he's like, ah, okay. Like he's going to leave. Like, all right, you know what? You won this battle. I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> and then they all just start to get slapped and hit. And I, that that part was funny to me. I'm sorry. I I know that's bad, but that part was funny. Um, and they start running. Perrin and Egwene start running, and the nice eyes guy starts running too. I forget his name. I apologize. And the white clothes come with their horses, knock them down, knock them out, kidnap them. And you know what's going to happen. Oh, we get to see Worf from Star Trek in this episode, man. That is Worf right there from Star Trek. That's him. I like this guy too, man. I like Worf from Star Trek. But I, ain't, I didn't know he was going to be in the show. But anyway, he's, a, he's an ogre. And I like this character so far. I hope we get to see more of him. I, don't, I forget his name, but I know he's an ogre. So yeah, I hope we see more of that character because I really like him. We see the ice cream man in this episode too. The ice cream man, Patton, Patton, Patton. I'm just going to call him Patton because I think that's his first name. The ice cream man from the first episode who led the Trollocs to the town. That's just my thought. Maybe it happened. I don't know. But anyway, he's in this episode too. He's still in the shadows. And Matt sees him from the rafters. And this part, I like this part, man. This part gave me goosebumps. I still, I'm still, I'm telling you, I still think Logan has some powers, man. So they bring in Logan through the town, right? And he starts laughing. He, he's looking up at Matt and he's laughing at him. Because I feel like he, he can sense, Logan can sense that Matt is cursed or Matt has the dagger. So that's why he's looking right at him. And he's laughing at him or that he senses some type of power from Matt. He can sense it. That's why he's just looking up, uh, up at him and laughing and laughing and laughing. It scares Matt. 
because he doesn't want to end up like that. He still thinks that he could be, have the one power and he possibly can, and he doesn't want to end up like that. So he says, you know what, Rand, if I end up like that, please just kill me. I don't want to end up like that. I don't want to be like them. The people who have the one power taken from them. We also see this. Stefan. 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 I'm, I'm sorry. I can't remember the name. It's one of those, I think. Um, he just looks dead. He looks like he's, he's given up on life. And I'm sitting there and I'm wondering, uh, what happens now? What happens to the ward if the Aes Sedai dies? Right? And they actually touch on this in this episode, which I'm glad. He actually tells the story of how he met his Aes Sedai. And he says that she picked him. So the Aes Sedai picked their wards. I did not know that. I do now. And Lamb brings up, hey, you know what? We'll just get you another Aes Sedai. And he's, he's mad. He's like... You, you let me know. You let me know how it feels when you lose Moraine. And then and then you can talk to me about getting a new Aes Sedai. Because that's important. I mean, that's a, that's a thing. That's a crazy thing that they have to go through. Feeling the same thing they're, the, uh, the Aes Sedai is feeling. That's, that's a bond, man. That's a crazy bond. So once you lose that, and it's the most powerful bond in the world. There's nothing like it. So that takes part of your soul when you lose her or when she loses you. I think it works both ways. I think it does. I'm telling you, man, this questioner, he's a beast, man. He's a beast. He's walking around with this sword, right? I think he's a fighter, too. I just have a feeling he's he's just going to be fighting people soon. And because there's also warriors in the Child of Light. I think that's what they're called. So he just looks like he's walking around with his, his arms out looking like a beast. So I was saying how Perrin and Egwene aren't dealing with any problems they're just you know happy go lucky with the tinkers dancing eating having a good old time this episode right here this episode right here it was coming they had to get theirs because the others got theirs and the questioner gave it gave it to them he gave it to them and we get to see the fierceness that Egwene has like she's fierce. I gotta mention this too. The acting in this episode. We can see in this episode the acting from these actors, right? They are showing that hey, you know what? I can act. I was a little I was a little worried after the first episode, the first couple of episodes. Hey, I don't know about this acting. I don't know about their acting, but this episode they did a great job with the acting. They really did. They did a great job with the acting. You can see the tears. You can see the emotion on their faces, which I love. All right. If you're going to get actors to play a role in this show, like the Will of Time community is no joke. All right. Especially the true fans. You don't want to mess with those true fans. They'll come after you. They'll knock on your door. They'll send you emails. They will. You don't want to mess with them. So you need to... They're probably not even watching this show anymore. The true fans don't like this show. They're probably... Get out of here with that. If you like the show, you're not a true fan. So I, I love you guys anyway. It doesn't matter. But they got some good actors so far. After, especially after this episode. Great acting in this episode all around so i really do appreciate the fact that they did this because the will of time is important to a lot of people a lot of people have read the books a lot of people have been skeptical about the show and i'm happy that a lot of the readers are enjoying the show 
I mean, you wouldn't be watching this if you weren't a fan of the books and a fan of the show. Most of you guys that watch this, uh, this content on my channel, this Wheel of Time content, are those that have read the books and you want the perspective of somebody who has never read the books. So I appreciate you guys. So I'm glad they actually, you can really see the acting in this, in this episode right here. Really good. I appreciate that. But yeah, we see the fierce, the fierceness of Egwene. And when the questioner is cutting his back, is cutting parents back, this, you can see the wolfness coming out. The wolf man is coming out. All right. <sighs> I knew it, man. I knew he I knew he can control the wolves, man. I called it. Go back and watch my other episodes. I called it. I called it. He can control the wolves. Go back and watch my other episodes. That that'll confirm it. All right. Don't take my word for it. Take my other videos word for it. Okay? Because that's the truth. I called it. Mmm. That dude's powerful too, man. It's, I, I got to tell you, man, that part, <laughs> this part had me laughing too. All right. So he, the question is trying to get Egwene to use her one power ability. Right. And she's like, she's, she's focusing. She's like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I mean, she doesn't do that, but then she throws a small fireball like <laughs> that. Hits him, in the, hits him in the chest and he just starts laughing. I I laughed at that part, man. I that was that was funny. <laughs> he was a little worried there. It looked like he was worried there at, for a second. And then it just poof, that's the sound it made too. Poof. That was funny, man. <laughs> and she was like, oh man. <laughs> oh man, this is the sound it made right here. <laughs> Uh, she thought she was gonna blow him away. <laughs> it's all right. You'll have you'll have so many more opportunities, Egwene, to show your true power. I know it. I can see it in your eyes, especially after this episode, because you were fierce in this episode, and I like that. I like that. But yes, Perrin can control the wolves. And he finally opened up. He finally opened up about his wife. To Egwene, he finally just said, you know what? It, it, I was responsible for her death. I swing, I swing the axe at her and I killed her. I was just in the heat of the battle, the heat of the moment. And it was an accident. And Egwene understands. She's talking, she's talking to him and saying, you, it's not your fault. You, it, it was an accident. It's going to take you a while to, to realize that it may take years for you to, to, to move on. But I just want you to know that that was an accident. That was an accident. It wasn't really your fault. So I'm with you. I'm paraphrasing, of course. And that's what just really gets his blood boiling to the point where he gets the wolves to come. And he rips out of his chains or the stuff he's, what is it, rope? He's tied to, he's tied with the rope. He rips out with the rope. And I was a little worried because I do not want the child of Valda to die. I thought he was going to rip his face off. I thought Perrin was going to rip him in half. And I'm glad he didn't because I like this character, man. I like the character of the child Valda. I like him. I don't want him to die yet. All right. He's he's a good bad guy. I'm a fan of bad guys in shows and movies. All right. So, and he's doing a great job. So, Child of Valda, good job, man. I don't know your name. I apologize. Or I would, you know, give you the proper thanks. But I like him. I'm glad they didn't die. They didn't kill him off. Cause I thought I thought I thought Baron was gonna do it, man. I thought he was gonna rip him off. But that part right there where the wolves came and helped him out, that was cool, man. I like that. I enjoyed that part. And he knew. And he knew, no, they're not gonna hurt you. So he knows now that he can control them. I don't know if he if he can actually tell one to go over there and get some food for them. And all that yet, but he knew that the wolves were not going to hurt 
him and Egg Wayne. So they were able to escape, which is cool, with the wolf's help. Yes. Now, there's a few scenes in here. Just Moraine just looks like she's spent she's been two over two years away from the tower away from her sisters uh she just looks spent like she doesn't want to do this anymore now there's a scene earlier where she's talking to Nynaeve and Nynaeve just she's scared she doesn't know what what the heck happened with her in the cave with her powers she doesn't want that power but she has it and she has to embrace it. Moraine tells her, listen, I was in this, I was in your same spot. I was in your same situation. I didn't want this power. I didn't want this responsibility. But it's something that you're going to have to get over because you have it. You have this power and it's not going anywhere. You can't get rid of it. So there's a few scenes where Moraine is just, she spent, like I said. So my prediction is, She's going to relieve Lan of his wardness, of his bondness, and then Lan is going to be Nynaeve's ward. That's going to happen because Lan is just, he's worried too. He thinks that Moraine is next. Moraine's going to lose her life and he's going to end up just like his friend, Stefan. And there's a few scenes in here where Moraine is just saying, hey, you know what? I, you can. We, I've read that we can relieve a ward of his bond. So that's just, making my, that's just making my mind just go round and round. And my thoughts are going round and round. And I'm thinking that she's going to relieve Ran. He, he, she's going to relieve Lan. Of his bondness. And sh and he's going to become Nynaeve's ward. Now that's probably down the line. Far, far away down the line. But I thought that was interesting. And that's my prediction. So the land chops are coming. I'm telling you right now. Mark it down. The land chops are coming for who? Nynaeve. They're coming. Moraine has a lot of skeletons in her closet, it seems, too. There's a conversation between her and her friend. They're laying in bed, and she says, you have a lot of secrets that eventually you're going to tell somebody. Now, I'm paraphrasing, of course, but she has a lot of skeletons in her closet, Moraine does. And it's just it's in interesting to see her like every time you see her face seems like she's worried she's spent and her friend also tells her that she should challenge the almond siege and become that the almond siege that she should challenge her so that's another reason that i think that Land is going to be relieved of his duties for Moraine, and he's going to become Nynaeve's ward. That's what I think. So I knew this was going to happen. I, I saw it coming ever since the last episode. After he found out that his Aes Sedai was dead, Stefan was going to take his life. And he got that sleeping powder from Nynaeve. And he used it on Lan because Lan was keeping an eye on him because I think he had the same thought too that I better stay with him because he doesn't look too good. I think he might end up taking his own life. Lan falls asleep. He wakes up, sees, hey, he's not in the room. There's also a knife gone and he finds him, he finds him in the hallway, stabbed in the stomach dead so then they cut to the you know the that was a, that was a strong scene right there that was um now the one thing i don't understand is 
the the head guy says something about taking the burden from I, I don't know I don't remember exactly what he said but to me it seems like when Lan goes up to him and you know puts his hand on the dead body like he's feeling what Stefan felt when he took his own life that's what that's my thought I don't know if, if I'm just talking crazy but that's what it seemed like he looked like he was in pain maybe it's just because he lost his brother but also it looks like Nynaeve and Moraine are just in pain as well because they're seeing him in pain so I don't know how it works I don't know if you lose your brother if whoever finds him relieves him of his pain and that's what Lan was feeling, the pain that that Stefan felt when he took his life. That was that I, that's interesting. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you guys can answer me answer that to me uh without spoiling anything. You guys have been uh, doing an amazing job. I read the comments. I try to respond to as many comments as I can. You guys are just throwing me a lot of comments and I please don't stop. Keep commenting. I love it. I love it. Please do not stop because it's great uh I, I i absolutely love reading the comments thank you so much for watching my content it really means a lot to me seeing the numbers go up and and just seeing that the chat is active that the comment section is active that just puts a smile on my face like i told you before and i will continue to tell you i appreciate you i love you guys and that's not just me saying i love you just to say it. honestly some of the comments almost put tears in my eyes that you guys are incredible and i hope you guys continue to watch my content we only have three episodes left I'm, I'm getting nervous i'm getting nervous i'll be honest with you i'm getting nervous because i don't want to lose the comment section i don't want to lose the the interaction that we're getting on this channel i don't want to lose it and i have a feeling that i hope i'm wrong i have a feeling that once this series or this show is over for the season that it's going to stop and hey you know what you came here for the will of time content and i don't know let me know what else you want me to to cover i enjoy you guys i love you guys that was it that was it that's the episode it was a good one and and uh we actually get to see some of a Perrin and egwene's pain in this one and we get to see a little bit of uh power as well from Perrin. i enjoyed it it was good so I'm thinking about doing a show, live show, after episodes, maybe Saturday nights, Friday nights. I'm not sure. Let me know in the comment section what you think. If you guys are interested in watching a live show with me, someone who hasn't read the books, uh, it's it's gonna be. It would be interesting to see how many of you guys would watch a live show how many people would come and try to spoil the show for me. Um, hopefully that won't happen. I know you guys are really good, especially in the comment section, trying to steer me away from comments that will spoil it for me. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't mind doing a live show, maybe on a Friday night or a Saturday night on YouTube. Let me know what you think. I'm always down to try new things especially with with uh, my audience and I I love it. I love it. So, yes, just let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. We're getting close to 2000. Well, not really, but we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. And if you like this, please consider subscribing. I appreciate you. I love you guys. I stream on Twitch every Tuesdays and Thursdays. I've seen some of you from this channel over on my twitch channel so i appreciate you guys feel free to drop by ask me questions tell me a little bit about yourself we can talk i love to interact with my chat so please feel free to join us twitch.tv slash treading lightly the link is in the description you can follow me on twitter instagram 
TikTok. All those links are in the description. All right. Feel free to join me on any of those platforms. I'm starting to tweet more. I'm enjoying these videos. You guys enjoyed my last dream video that I put out recently. So I think if we get another dream sequence, I'll do a separate video on the dream. All right. Now subscribe to this channel because I'm going to do, be doing my rewatch sometime this weekend and uploading it as soon as it's finished. So subscribe for that. Turn on the notifications too. That's important. Notifications too. All right. I love you guys. Stay safe and have a good one.